Hello my dear beautiful bastard, I'm Peter, your glorious lord and welcome to Cradle. This is the pre-release version of the game that is coming out on July 24th. The creators of this game also created Stalker, and since this is a quest-based exploration game, it is quite different compared to Stalker, so we'll see how it goes. There is also no face, because this game really needs to be experienced directly without any distractions. I know most of you love my face, but this time we must be faceless. Let us go. And here we are in the game. We wake up with no memory whatsoever, we don't know what the hell is going on, and we have certain tasks to accomplish. So the first thing that we need to do is cook. It is my note. Tabaha, I got fat and now I smell bad. Turn off your nose and don't look at me. I didn't say goodbye to Ongots. I waited for him all day, but he didn't return. Please feed him and change him, lest he gets sick. Follow this recipe. So we gotta create food for the bird. Ongots is a big bird, it's very scary. So, uh, I gotta be honest, it took me around an hour and a half to cook the food. Because uh, the game really does not help you. <laughs> the game doesn't give a shit about you, and you gotta figure out everything on your own. But, to be frank, uh, now when I'm playing for the second time, I can clearly see everything where everything is, but... If, you, if your intelligence is a little bit fucked up, then you're gonna need a lot of time to do it for the first time. Like, like it took me a lot of time. So, hit the red pot. Now, the first question that I asked myself was, where the fuck is the red pot? Now, the red pot is, is if I remember correctly, is this the red pot? No, wait, that's not the red pot. The red pot is... Here is the red pot. Here is the red pot. Found it. We gotta put it down here. So next we have add a glass of water. We're going to take this little bastard. We're going to start the water. No, no, wait. Let me lower it down. Start the water. Take it back and put the water in there. And then fill it up with water. Throw this shit away. Stop the water. What is the next step? Next step would be to add a few cut palm of life fruits. So the fruit is outside. This is the out outer side of the world. It's very atmospheric. It's very nice. Birdies all over the place. You can you can hear the wind. You can hear the beautiful birds. It's wonderful. Okay, enough of birds. Let's go down. Uh, we are going to go around the back, I think. Yeah, let's go around the back. To the right. We're gonna get some fruits. Because you can't feed the bird without the fruits. And the fruits are on these trees. Up here. See the fruits? That was a red fruit on the tree. Look edible. And we gotta just take the stick and throw the stick up there. And we need to collect, I think, two two of these fruits, right? Take one fruit and then smash smash this one. Thank you very much. Take the second fruit and maybe let's take one more just for for good measure. Where's the stick? Stick! Hey! Stick? Where the hell is the stick? God damn it. We don't need it. Oh well. <laughs> I lost the stick. So we can't knock off more Fruits. So let's get back up. Let's cut the fruit, put it in our soup, and after that we gotta get some dry root. Also, uh, you gotta use a mortar to get the dry root uh, smashed up. I had no idea what mortar meant, so I had to Google it. So let us put them on the floor. It's on the floor. It's it's hygienic enough, and we need the the knife. Give me the knife, thank you very much. 
we can cut both of them and throw the knife very carefully somewhere take the fruits put the fruits inside now when the fruits are inside let's see the next step add dried root and we gotta grind it and grinding is done with the mortar had no idea what the mortar was so let's add it to our inventory the mortar is up here hiding behind this shit let's throw that away as well let's take the mortar put the mortar right here no put it nicely put it nicely thank you let's grab the mushy musher this is the mushy musher let's add it to the inventory take the root put this inside and smush it smush it throw this away and then put it inside throw this away as well uh, what is next what is next we need to add salt we need to add salt now these are the ingredients over here i'm not really sure which one is the salt uh, wait a second let me check this empty matchbox well it's quite flat as well <laughs> maybe this second one it needs to turn orange let's see yes correct thank you put that back is it back yes it is and now we gotta open this up put some stuff inside oh whoops wrong button wrong button put it inside put it no put it inside it's not like i'm trying to put it in my butt it's just inside don't be like that two are enough no wait open up my li light it up throw the lighter away and this should be good and then we can take it outside put it over here and wait until the beautiful bird comes oh he's coming already look at it look at the beautiful bird So majestic, I want to be a bird and shit on people's faces. So beautiful. You are beautiful. We gotta change this thing that he's wearing, so we gotta take the new one. The new one is where? Over here. So we gotta take this and put it put it onto him. First we gotta remove wait. Stop. Calm down. B calm down, bird. And then remove this. Come on, remove it. Throw it away. And take the new one. Put it in. Off you go. Off you go, bird. You're welcome. Oh, you're beautiful. The most beautiful bird person has ever seen. Uh, so, wait, what is next? Find an application for the number. Ah, yes. There is a number on the... On this one, 2053, 2053, and with that password, we gotta unlock, where is it? Yep. This is our journal. Let us read our journal. We've got a journal now. Thanks, Tabaha. My name is Enebish. I've always lived here because I can't go anywhere else. Grandpa Bajin says lots of people used to live around here, but they all died when the dome blew up. The area has been deserted ever since, aside from myself, Bajin and Ongots. Ongots has very powerful claws. He obeyed my father and helped him hunt Hares. <laughs> I like that word. Hares. Hares. Is it Hares is, or is it Hares? I don't give a shit. Hares. Hares. I don't remember my parents. They died in the explosion as well. When the wind picks up, it gets pretty chilly. You can find refuge from it, but not for long. You can't last long without light. That's why I crafted this transparent layered vest, like in that program about greenhouses. It keeps Ongots warm during the day, and when the night's chill arrives, I put him into another warm vest. I collect and digitize flowers. I look for the prettiest ones and make phytocopies of them. Tabajo then takes them into town and sells them. The earnings keep him afloat, while Grandpa and I buy cheese. Oh, cheese, I love cheese. We've got a new genometer. It measures everything, flowers, insects, people. It clocked Bachin at 47 and the tree by the gate at 24. Even the stool got measured, though that took a little longer. But when aimed at Ongots or myself, it still shows the same old error. 
Grandpa says it's all providence. Maybe he is right. I have this dream sometimes. I'm in a strange city. The day is waning. Folks are walking in the distance. There's somebody beside me, but I don't see who. The dream is fleeting, always leaving me with a strange sensation, like I'm supposed to pass something to somebody, but I can never remember when or to whom. I feel some kind of mix of anxiety and chagrin, and it makes me want to go there, to that town. Grandpa Batchin has died. He wanted to do a transfer after losing his sight and mobility. Tabaha even brought him the equipment, but Grandpa died in his sleep. He was buried at the spot he had requested. Tomorrow marks the four-year anniversary of Grandpa's funeral, which means I'm already 23. Everything is still the same. I tried living again, but no dice. I simply lose consciousness, like before. I want to find that town from my dream. Perhaps I'll risk it and do a transfer. Grandpa's got no use for his helmet these days, but I might. If I get lucky, I'll wake up in a new body in Ulaanbaatar. Too bad the genometer won't show my number. I know how dangerous it is. When I look up at the poster over my bed, for some reason I remember my toys. When I was a kid, maybe five or so, I had a favorite toy. An odd little space case. On Gods had found it somewhere and brought it to me. Then I saw dark swirls in the field, got scared and stashed the toys away for some reason. And to make sure I didn't forget the hiding place, I came up with a clue. Come out of the yurt and fly straight as the crow. On a rock with a snag, look for an arrow. A sorrowful tree will show you the way. A box in the sand will a mystery betray. But now I can't find it. You silly man. But we shall find it. We shall find the toy. So as you can see... Uh, he talks about some kind of a transfer. Basically, in this world, people are mostly robots. Some sort of cyborgs or something. So, let us go find the cache. We gotta go straight to this rock. Rock with a snag. Then the, that shows me the way to the left. Once we get to the left, we go here and we see the arrow. There's the arrow, and we gotta go down here. It's very simple. Actually, it didn't take me long to figure this out, so I'm proud, very proud. And here it is. Thank you very much. So, that little thing that we got is the brain of this girl. So we gotta exchange her brain, throw this away, and put the new brain in. A good brain. Let's close her head. And now we gotta change a few different things to make her work. We gotta take these two parts. The container and this other thing, I don't know what's it called. Some shit. Let's call it some shit. We gotta add some shit and close her up. Actually, yes, close her up and start her up. I think she should function properly. Somewhere in Mongolia, in some yurt. What happened to me? I don't know. I don't remember anything either. Was it you who switched me on? Yes. Are you a Mulga? I don't know. But I doubt it. Where did you get my neurochip? I found it in a cache underground. What cache? A long time ago, I hid a cache of toys in the ground. You were playing with my neurochip and then buried it in the ground? Looks that way. But I don't remember any of it. My name is Enabish, I think. And you are? What do you want? I want to know what's going on here. You're not a Mulgar. I don't know what a Mulgar is. Can you explain? Someone who kidnaps people and sells their substance. What substance? I don't understand. My name is Ida. And I understand even less than you do. I do not recognize this body. There's something wrong with it. I can't see anything and I don't feel my legs. What's wrong with my legs? They're, um, fused together. Kind of like a vase. What? You've got a flower vase where your legs should be. That's ridiculous. I'm scared. Calm down, Ida. Tell me, are you a robot? I'm a human being in an artificial body. You mean you've had your body replaced? Half of humanity had their bodies replaced. 
Where did you get my neurochip? Ida. I've just now found it in an old cache. The cache you made when you were a child? Yes, if my journal is to be trusted. How could my neurochip have ended up in the hands of a child? Ongots brought it. My father's trained golden eagle. I don't know where he had found it. How long ago was that? Long. Eighteen years ago. Listen, Enabish. I feel ill at ease here, and scared. I want to remember who I am and return home. Please help me. I want the same thing. How can I help? You need to call the evacuators. They'll come and take me away. I've been trying to send a request, but it's useless. My marker isn't answering. What marker? The authenticity marker. It's like my passport. It's got all my personal data. All requests must be accompanied by data from the marker, but it appears to be broken. So what do we do? I don't know. We might be able to use my neurocopy number, but I don't remember it. I remember almost nothing about myself. Just like me. Well, at least you're in your home. You know about your childhood, your family. I'm not sure if I'm home. I don't know this place. Strange. Listen, why don't you start asking me questions? Anything you wish to know. Maybe that will help sort my memories. Maybe I'll even remember the number. Are you all right? I feel something is wrong with this body. I can't figure out what, but we need to hurry. Tell me about artificial bodies. About bodies? All right. They are called M bodies. Hold on. Why replace people's bodies? Because of the epidemic. There was a virus that spread across the globe, a sterility virus. They couldn't fight it, so they developed this body replacement program, transferring consciousness from a regular body into a mechanical one. Kind of like a personal refuge? Right, a temporary refuge. People use it to hide from decrepitude. Once the virus is cured, we'll be able to return to our regular bodies. The virus could be gone by now. It's been years. I don't know. It was just so... No treatment worked. Not antibiotics, nothing. There was only one substance capable of destroying the virus, Passium. But the accumulation process was extremely slow. How was it accumulated? It was extracted from people themselves. Human beings produced it with their nervous system. Nervous system? I don't get it. Well, Passium can only be extracted from emotions. Whenever you experience an emotion, any emotion, your M-body manufactures a little bit of the substance. A substance produced by emotions? Yes. Emotions were the only thing capable of making a remedy against the virus. As a result, Passium skyrocketed in value, far surpassing everything else. And every person, they became... Everybody became a source of value? Yes, although there were people whose substance was considered more valuable than that of others. Who were those people? People that were special somehow. They had something. They were greatly respected, but I can't remember. I think I figured out what's wrong with me. I can't breathe. Breathe? You need oxygen? I simply need to inhale air. It's been... Inherited from my former body, a reflex. I can't get rid of it. All M bodies have a special module built in for this very purpose. It imitates breathing. Can I help you somehow? I need a breathing module. Could you find it for me? Where do I look? We're in the middle of the step. The step and nothing else? Describe for me what's around here. The river, some abandoned complex. What kind of complex? A big dome with multicolored sails. Hold on. Yes, I see it. I've got access to it. The Gerbera Garden. Enabish, I remember this name. I used to have a connection to this place. I think that it's an amusement park. It looks the part. Embody parts restored there, in the pavilions. It should definitely have a breathing module. All right, I'll try. Find the seventh pavilion. I'll try to find the password to the file database. It may contain my data. 
If I remember anything, I'll contact you. All right. All right. So, I think I'm going to pause it here. The next step would be to go to the amusement park outside and check it out, see what's going on there. But we'll leave that for next time. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying Cradle. It indeed took me two hours to get to this point the first time I played. So the game is not very friendly. The game does not like you. You gotta figure things out all by yourself. And hopefully that will not uh, annoy people. It kind of annoys me a little bit. But it also forces me to just try to find the way to to fix everything and to complete everything. It's, it's kind of addicting for me at least. Some people might might find it like, you know, they can't find the solution in 30 minutes and then just they quit. Some people are like that, but not me. And hopefully not you too. So let me know what you think about Cradle and I shall see you next time.